Some other important things to start thinking about when you want to restore an image or to correct an image is how can you make an image look better than it uh, originally did. A lot of people when they see a picture that is too light or too dark, uh, the first thing they want to do is go and play with the brightness and contrast. When you are playing with photographs and you are trying to make them look better, you should um, basically forget that brightness and contrast even exists because it's evil and uh, should die a slow and painful death when it comes to photography in Photoshop. It has uses, but photography is not one of them. So, if you can't use brightness and contrast, what can you use? Well, there are several different things that you can use. You go to Image, Adjustments, and of course we see lots of words in here, um, lots of techniques that uh, start with the word Auto. Auto, yeah, it's okay if you want to be a Photoshop monkey because everybody and their brother can click on auto levels and there you go you're letting the computer do the thinking for you and if you're in a time crunch and it doesn't make your picture look dreadful okay there you go you're done but of course uh, we want to be a little bit more than just a Photoshop monkey and uh, we know how to do more than just push a button so I'm gonna do control Z to undo that and uh, I'm gonna show you ways that you can uh, make this image look better using um, some of the controls that uh, let you use your own brain to make your own decisions because a lot of times that auto feature is going to work for you but there are a few times when uh, when you hit auto levels or auto color or something like that it's going to turn it purple and pink for some ungodly reason and uh, then if you don't know how to do all of the uh, manual adjustments you're going to have to deal with either a crappy looking picture because it's too dark or too light or it's going to be purple and pink so there you go if you go to image adjustments levels that's the easiest one to start with and this is where I completely and 100 percent uh, recommend that if you can get a dual monitor system and also work at a resolution above 800 by 600 your life will be a much easier thing to deal with I have a dual monitor system but because I'm trying to show you this stuff, I am not using it. And I feel a bit handicapped. The point being, I can't see my picture for the dialog box, and that's common. So we'll just move the dialog box all over the place, which is annoying, but we have to deal with it. Levels. If you take the little black slider and drag it up toward the white slider, you will be working with darkening the image. And since this image is too light to begin with, that is probably what you'd want to do. If you have an image that is too dark, you can make yourself go blind in this picture um, by taking the white slider and bumping up the white. Uh, I can do um, a tutorial all about the histogram here and what you're seeing, but uh, if you really want to know that kind of stuff, that's why you sign up for my classes. Anyway, so notice how the gray slider is moving with the black slider and the white slider. The gray slider is your gamma slider, basically your midtones, and you can move that one independent of the black slider and the white slider so you can get some more refinement of your image. So something along those lines is actually looking pretty decent to me. And there you go. If you want to compare what it was like before, Control Z, there it is to begin with. There it is after I do a levels adjustment. Okay, another way to play with the uh, levels, I'm going to do Control Z to undo. Uh, this is a nice little tip that uh, a lot of people may not tell you about. If you come in here and look at your layers, and now I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my picture and do Control Zero so I can see the whole picture and the layers palette. I want to make a copy of this layer, and I'm going to do Control J or Command J just to make a copy. And now I'm going to take my layer blending mode up here, 
And uh, because I've played with layer blending modes for years, I kind of know what they're going to do. And this image is too light, so I want to darken it up a little bit. And one of the ways that you can darken up something is if you make a layer above and set the layer or the uh, layer blending mode to uh, multiply. It's right there. See how that is making it darker? And now, since I have this layer, layer one is set to multiply. If I do Control J. It's going to do another multiply layer and another control J. See how that's getting too dark, a little too saturated. Okay, um, so now I can just throw those away and that's looking somewhat decent. If you get one you like, you can make a blank new layer at the top. And here is the granddaddy of all keyboard shortcuts. Control Alt Shift E. Command Option Shift E almost uses your elbow to do it. That will make a stamped version and keep all of your copies, which is really nice. Um, that is, as far as I know, an undocumented uh, keyboard shortcut in Photoshop, by the way. Um, and here I have a layer that I could then start to play with. And I could come in here and I could do image adjustments levels. And you can see that this image has already been manipulated because look at the combing in this particular histogram with all the spaces. Anyway, that also is something you would learn about in one of my classes and not in a tutorial on YouTube. Um, but now I could do the histogram or the levels adjustment and start to kind of play with that image that way. Okay, so two different ways here that you can take an image and you can darken it up. There are more, but these are just two of the simplest ways to do it.